Hey guys, today's a vloggy style video, so I'm holding the camera. There's my arm. Um, we are going to be doing some stuff to my M17XR4 as I just got in the new CPU heatsink and new CPU fan. So these are kind of neat. We'll start with the CPU cooler. So the CPU cooler has three heat pipes now, so it's two sandwiched together. But it also has a vapor chamber for the CPU side. So if you look there, you can see the little pitting on it. And then we've also got a new CPU fan, which is effectively the same fan as the GPU, um, which helps me out a lot in my case because I have a 1070 mobile in here, which means in order to get any fan control, I have to do this little app right here. Um, in case you couldn't tell, the fan right now is at 100% usage because I, one, wanted to test this before putting in the new parts, and two, because it's uh, I wanted to keep the GPU cool. So, yeah. <clears throat> right now, we sit in the 40s at idle, so it's not terrible, but not amazing. So I'm going to let this thing run for about 10 minutes or so at full tilt, and then I'm going to show you guys what that temperature is. So we've been going for about 10 minutes now. Turbo clock dropped to 3.3 gigahertz, and so we're now sitting at 93 degrees-ish. Um, it got all the way to 96 during the full turbo, which was 3.6 gigahertz. Um, it settled in at 92 in the last about 5 minutes or so. Um, full disclosure, by the way, this is a 3720 QM, uh, but the M17X does allow you to overclock it, which is why I've got such high clock speeds for this chip. Um, and I got to thinking, we're going to run Cinebench also to see how Cinebench does for the next thing is going to be how the Cinebench run looks, because I'm also curious if the performance will improve if I get the temperatures lower. Um, I know that the CPU clock has been fluctuating a little bit, not as much as I expected actually. It's been staying pretty consistent at 3.3, which is pretty cool. So over here are the clock speeds. So you can see our peak clock was actually 3.7, uh, but average clock was 3.6, so yeah, definitely can't complain. This thing's been super good. So we'll be back with the uh, Cinebench numbers now. And so we got 618, which actually isn't too far off from a 3770K, or sorry, 3770. And it's all, it's about 20 points higher than the CPU is supposed to score. So I'm 100% I'm content with that. Next up, we're going to swap the cooler and take a look. So I'm gonna let this thing cool down a little bit and then we're gonna do that. Okay, let's take this thing apart. Step one in any laptop disassembly, regardless of what you're doing, always remove the battery. So, I was lucky mine came with a new battery, so, yay. On the M17X R4 and R3, you're going to have two screws on either side of this plate. I've only got one installed because, uh, yeah. And you just push it up, and it lifts right off. Now, I already have the upgraded GPU cooler. So this has four or five heat pipes and is a full copper base. So we're gonna be upgrading the CPU heatsink today. First thing you're gonna do is unplug the CPU fan here and then unscrew its three mounting screws. And then carefully lift it out and put it to the side. Um, I won't be needed again, but if you don't upgrade your fan, you'll wanna put it somewhere safe so you can put it back in. Next step is take off the CPU cooler. Because this chip does not have a cover, make sure to remove the screws slowly in a cross pattern as to not chip the die. Then you're gonna carefully lift off the CPU cooler, lift it up until it stops because of the back panel and then pull it forwards and out. Next, you wanna clean off the extra thermal paste and you can just do this with a paper towel, tissue, cloth, whatever. Okay, next step is to be putting on thermal paste. So, because this is a blank die, you do wanna make sure you have full coverage. So I'm gonna put on a little bit more than I probably need. As if, honestly, if it flows over, it's not the end of the world. Now, if you were just repasting the laptop from here, you could put the original heatsink back on after cleaning it, and you'd be all good because I'm swapping it out for a new heatsink. 
I will be putting on my new heatsink. What you're going to want to do is slide the, fa the fins into the body like so. With the new heatsink, it's a little tight because it's got foam to hold it in place. <clears throat> Just like that. And then you're going to want to set it down onto the CPU. And then once again, you're going to want to tighten it down very slowly in a cross pattern. Make sure it actually threads into the mounts. And there you go. Then you'd want to take your fan and put it back in. Again, if you were just changing your thermal paste and not upgrading, you can put the original fan back in. But I have a magic new fan. Then you're going to plug your CPU fan right back into this header. Uh, i got to figure out which way this faces. And then you've officially swapped your cooler and fan, or you've officially reinstalled your cooler and fan. Now we're going to slide the bottom cover back on. Um, if you have swapped out either of these heat sinks, the back hook is going to be a little tight, so you have to press down on the center as you push it back. Make sure the edges latch, and you're all good. It's only a little snug, it's not bending anything, but it does make it, you know, as I said, very snug to get in. So, just something to be aware of. Then you're gonna wanna throw your battery back in the laptop. And bing bada boom, it is done. So, one thing I am going to say is I did not put the same thermal paste on. I had to use TJ07, so I'm going to see probably a temperature difference from that alone. But we are coming back down to 40 degrees C, so if I gave this some time at an idle state, it would probably come down all the way. But my issue was max temperature, so we're going to see if this improved the max temperature at all. Boost clock is 3.6, temperature is 73. So that definitely helped a lot. I'm gonna let this go for a little bit so it can drop out of turbo clock and see what the temperature gets to is. So I'll be right back. So I've been letting go for a little while now. It has dropped its clock speed down to 3.3 and we are sitting at 77 degrees C, which is way better than we were doing. That's what, 15 degrees difference from before. So I will take that as a win. It's actually bouncing between 76 and 77, to be honest, but I'm gonna just say 77 for sake of argument. It did hit 80 when it was doing normal turbo boost behavior. Uh, but again, that's 3.6 gear, so 80 degrees is totally fine. <clears throat> we are now going to run Cinebench and see if it made a difference. It shouldn't, but I'm curious, so. So we did actually see the score go up. We went up by about 10 points, which could be down to just, oops, could be down to just windows, but you never know. So that's that's kind of it with this one. Um, I do have pl more plans for this laptop. So for example, I will be tying the GPU fan um, RPM to the CPU fan. Uh, I'm gonna be tying the PWM signal. I'm gonna do some checks on the header to make sure that works, but This is mostly going to be used for gaming, so they can both kind of be at the same speed and they'll be fine. I've done some testing on my own, and with the GPU fan running at lower RPM, or even the same as the CPU fan, it was fine. So, with the new fan being much faster, it should be still perfectly fine. But yeah, that's kind of it for today. Um, it improved Cinebench a little bit, improved temperatures a lot. I suspect the reason my idle temperatures are higher is do the thermal paste. So I ended up using TG7, not that there's a logo on my tube, but this is TG7 uh, from Thermaltake, which is my normal go-to if I'm building someone a computer because it's cheap. It's really good. I tested it a few years ago. I was gonna do a video on it, never published it, but um, it's basically better than anything else I could get at Best Buy locally. So, but 
I was using Thermal Grizzly Aquanaut on here. Unfortunately, the tube I was going to use is all dried up, so the paste is useless. Um, so I have to get another tube of it, because I don't know where my tube is. And then I'll repaste it, and I'm sure the numbers will be better then. But for right now, my laptop is done and working to the point where I can take it wherever. I can set a fan speed to, like, 4,000 RPM, and it'll be fine. It'll run games beautifully. 100% is really overkill for this machine. Again, I've got a 37... 20 qm which isn't the fastest chip in the world yeah i have it overclocked so that it hits like 3.6 most of the time but it's still not really that fast for the cpu um, i do want to run 3d mark again and see if i can get even higher on the rankings i as of a, f a couple weeks ago i was the top score for uh 3d mark fire strike with this configuration specifically this configuration though so that's 1070 3720 Alienware laptop. So we'll see if I get higher than that. I'm curious. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your week. This is kind of hopefully going to be a quick blurb video. I don't know. I haven't looked at how long this thing is. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed it, let me know. Um, hit like, subscribe, helps me out. Uh, Twitter, I'll be posting more stuff on there. And enjoy the rest of your week. You guys have a good one.